May your life be transformed with this message. Subscribe to our channel so you won't miss notifications. And share this word to bless more lives. Let's work together to win souls. Dr. Don Agu and respected faculty members, I feel this is a great privilege for me to be invited to speak at this auspicious occasion. And also congratulations for your successful accomplishment of your studies and graduate. Once my son enrolled at this wonderful school, but he dropped out. <laughs> so I do not have the privilege of attending at his graduation service. But today, I feel really the presence of the Holy Spirit among us here, and I think God is preparing something great good for your future. And I want to read a portion of scripture before I speak. My scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. We then, as workers together with him also, plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now you are graduating this wonderful college and you continually pursue your future calling of the Lord. And to make a successful life, you need to receive God's help. You must work together with God. Alone, you can't accomplish great success, but together with God, you can accomplish tremendous things for the glory of the Lord. And to work together with God, you have certain conditions to fulfill in your life. For 45 years of my ministry, I have learned quite many of these principles through my own experiences. To work together with God, number one, you must have a clear goal, vision in your life. Just as the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't have any vision in your heart, you don't have any future at all. But when you have vision, you should have a clear-cut goal vision. In 1958, when I was pioneering my first church under the old American marine tent with five person, while I was praying, the Holy Spirit put the clear-cut vision into my heart that I should believe for 300 members in three years. And I made the goal vision very clear. I learned this lesson through my uh, uh, great difficulty in my life. At those days I was living in a very humble mud house and I needed a table and chair and bicycle. And I prayed very much to the Lord every day, God, please supply me table, chair and bicycle in the name of Jesus Christ. Day after day, day after day, I prayed and I expected to receive those gifts, but God never answered. And one rainy day, I was depressed, I was starved, and I was crying. I said, Lord, I know that you are in heaven, but now in my own experience, I find that you are not too much concerned about my need. I've been praying this uh, table, chair, and bicycle for this many months, and, but you will not answer me. Then still a small voice came into my heart. Open the Hebrews 11th chapter and read what the scripture says. Faith is substance of things of the poor. You don't have clear cut things in your heart. You have vague vision, not clear cut goal. Don't you know there are several kind of table, chair and bicycle in the world? And what kind of chair and table and bicycle do you want? <laughs> so I said, oh, that's up to you. You must choose for me. But God said, no. Delight yourself in the Lord. He will fulfill desire of your heart. You must make it very clear. So I said, Father, thank you. I cancel all of my past prayers. So I request God in very clear terms. 
I said, Father, I want such a size of the table made by Philippine mahogany tree wood, and I want to have a chair iron framed made by Japanese Mitsubishi company, and I want to have a bicycle made by USA here on the side. <laughs> and I made those requests so clear that I had clear goal vision in my mind. When I was praying, I could see those table chain bicycles so clear that I, God could never make any mistakes on those things. <laughs> then, surely enough, in a few months, I received all of those articles. Table made by Philippine mahogany wood and chair made by the Mitsubishi company and bicycle made by USA, slightly used by missionary child. <laughs> there I learned how to pray. Since that time until now, I've never prayed in vague term. I make the goal very clear. You must have very clear cut goal and then you can have a clear vision. But if you have vague goal, you have vague vision. And I had a clear cut goal of 300 members. And when you embrace the vision, the, the vision leads you, guides you, help you to accomplish the goal. Brothers and sisters, don't forget this. When you embrace the vision, vision will make you. I embraced the 300 member in my heart very clear and pray. Then in three years I had 500 members. Then God said, if you have 3,000 member goal in your heart, if you can embrace the 3,000 members, I will fulfill it. So I embraced the 3,000 goal. And I was praying and I was talking as if I were the pastor of 3,000. I was walking as if I were the pastor of 3,000. <laughs> dignified. And I was speaking as if I was speaking to the 3,000. Many of my Christians would put finger into their ears. Pastor, you are talking to a few hundred and you are shouting too loud. <laughs> but I said, no, you are making mistake. I'm speaking to 3,000. 1964, I was speaking to 3,000. Then God continually increased the goal vision to 6,000, 10,000, then 100,000, 300,000, half a million. Then God said, lift up your head, look to the north and south and east. If you could embrace the membership one million, I will fulfill it. So I'm in the process of arriving to the one million membership right now. So brothers and sisters, when you stand before God, you must make your goal vision very clear. Ask the Holy Spirit to impact his goal vision into your soul because Spirit of the Lord is there to give you visions and dream. And you are not making visions and dream. The visions and dreams are going to make you. Show me your visions and dream. I will foretell your future. I've sent many of my disciples throughout Korea, but every city in every town, my own disciples have the largest church in that area. Already they are competing with me. One of my disciples has 200,000 members right near to my city. So we are competing each other. <laughs> They've learned how to have clear cut goal vision and dwell in that goal vision. When you embrace the goal vision, then goal vision is going to lead you and guide you and help you. Number two, you must have a burning desire to see your goal fulfilled. I've never seen any zombie accomplish anything in life. <laughs> you must have burning desire in your heart. When you have burning desire, then you are going to pray and ask God till you receive assurance from above. Usually those days I would pray every day for more than five hours. I would sit and pray and pray and pray for five hours. Of course, those days I had a few members and I had not 
seems to do too much work, so I only sit down and pray. <laughs> but through the prayer, I could conquer the resistance of Satan, and I could have assurance in my heart. I will never stop till I have assurance. Many people stop short of having the assurance. You must continually, persistently pray and knock on the door till the door is open and God pour out his assurance into your heart. So having the real zeal in your heart to Accomplish your goal is very important. Once you have that burning desire, that desire would drive you to kneel down and pray. And that desire will help you to study and to work very hard. And number three, to fulfill condition to work together with God, you must have an overcoming faith. I tell you, the overcoming faith, because there you have the spiritual warfare. When you try to have faith, then the devil will come and challenge you. You will have real serious spiritual warfare. Your five senses would rise up and defy you. And your logical mind would rise up and defy you. And even your past experience would become hurdle to your faith. And your faith will be surrounded by the enemies. There you must continually choose the faith. Faith is not something that you emotionally feeling. Sometimes you will not feel anything at all. But you should choose the side of faith. Jesus reprimanded those one who will not choose the faith. God already has given you a portion of faith in your life. So it is not a matter of the size of your faith. It is a matter of how to use your faith, which you already have in your heart. So this is the secret of faith. You must have willpower to choose the faith instead of fear. And when you continually choose the faith, then you can wage war against the Satan, and you can win the spiritual warfare in your faith. I have one weakness in my church. She received a miraculous healing in 12 years. She had a car accident and she had a broken leg. And doctor operated on her t twice and finally they put the iron bar inside of her leg and her one leg was a few inches shorter than the other legs and she was limping very badly. But one day she heard my message about divine healing and she decided to receive divine healing. And she had a clear-cut goal vision of herself. She was seeing every day that she was completely healed and walking normally. And she prayed fervently. And she tried to believe. But a lot of her friends come to her and try to dissuade her not to believe for such a thing. They said, it's silly for you to believe a miracle because God sometimes lengthens the bone, but he would never lengthen the iron bar. So you are standing on the iron bar, not on the bone. So it's impossible. But she says, no, God is creator of the universe and he can do anything. So she kept on pressing, believing that her relatives and her own children would really ask her to give up. They said, you are becoming a laughing stock in our neighbors. They all look at you and you are still claiming that God would heal you. But they are laughing at you. You have become laughing. We are ashamed of you. Don't keep on claiming the healing of, on your legs. But she says, no, I believe. She was really having a spiritual warfare. And her sense knowledge would really contradict to her faith. And her own logical mind would become hurdle to her. And her relative and her children would really dissuade her not to continue such a faith. But she prayed for one year, two year, three year, four year, for ten years, but still she was believing. And even I tried to dissuade her not to believe that. <laughs> and I said, Sister, when I read Bible, in many cases God performed miracle on human body, 
But I have never read any time that God ever lengthened the iron bar. And you don't have bone, you are standing on the iron bar. So when you resurrect, then God will give you a perfect leg. But she says, no pastor. She says, I believe the word of God. God can do anything. In 12 years, on Sunday, I preached the faith and I prayed for the healing. She stood up. She said, today I'm healed. God touched me and healed. And all the people look at her. She was uh, terribly limping yet. And she was standing on lopsided. And she went back home limping but rejoicing. And when she went back home, she said, Today, our pastor announced the healing on short leg, and I am the one. I got healed. This is mother, you are still limping. But she said, No, I'm going by faith, not by sight. So for one week she was still limping, but after one week, one morning, when she stood up before the mirror, she was straight, her leg was lengthened, and she has normal legs. <laughs> Even nowadays, whenever I see her, I can't believe my eyes. I say, oh my God, how could you lengthen the iron bar? <laughs> but she's normal, she's standing Tall on two legs. Wonderful. God can do anything for you. But you must really have the spiritual warfare in the area of faith. When you start to believe, devil would attack you from four corners. And many people soon give up their faith. But you must persist on. Persist on. But 14 years ago, God asked me to start a Christian daily newspaper. I didn't know anything about newspaper. But God said, you must have a Christian daily newspaper to evangelize the unbelieving world. Unbelievers, they won't come to church. But when you have daily newspaper, then from the Blue House, from presidential offices to every business places, they would read newspaper. So. I consulted with specialists, and specialists said, to start your newspaper, you need uh, 10 million seed money. I said, 10 million? Then they said, you need every month 3 million cool cash to support newspaper till five years. And so we warn you not to go into this ministry. So I came to the Lord and I said, Lord, you see the specialist told me that I should never start your paper. But God said in my heart, am I not specialist? <laughs> Why do you listen to the lesser specialist? I am the superior specialist. Listen to me. So I announced that I would start newspaper. And all of my elders, they were depressed. You know. At those days, our yearly income totally was about $12 million in our church. And as a seed money, we needed $10 million right away. But anyway, with blind, blind faith, I launched the newspaper. And uh, oh, every month, $3 million bill was on my table. And uh, I felt as if I was burning the dollar in the oven. And in a few years, our finance dried up completely. And we were at the point of bankruptcy. And my faith was tried very much. All of my sense knowledge defied me. All my logical mind defied me. And my friends, my relatives, they all ridiculed at me. And I was surrounded by enemies. And then I determined to choose faith. And one Sunday after the service, my wife and I were driving home. We were crossing over the Han River. And I said to my wife, this might be the last time crossing this river because next week we'll be completely bankrupted. And I will finish my ministry. 
But my wife is a pianist, and she's a musician. She was humming the music, sitting right beside me, and I felt very bad in my heart. She was not having sorrow together with me. She was rejoicing in her own heart. <laughs> then suddenly, the door of car was opened. Someone jumped in and sat in front of the seat and turned around and looked at me. And when I look at him, he was Jesus. I was nudged at my wife. Jesus hitchhiked our car. She looked at says, you are crazy. You, 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 you are worrying too much. Nobody is here. I said, no, no, no. He's here right now looking at us. I was seeing the vision, but she was not seeing. And she says, you are crazy. I think you must consult your doctors because you are worrying too much. <laughs> then Jesus smiled to me. And Jesus said, what troubles you? I said, Jesus, the newspaper company is at the point of bankruptcy, and our finance dried up in our church, and we can't support anymore, and I have no place to turn to. And Jesus said, who is the owner of the newspaper? I said, me. Oh, then you have trouble. Then Jesus said, if you put me in the place of the presidency, I will take care of it. I threw up my hand. Dear Jesus, I take all things into your hand. Praise God, I'm free from the burden. Then Jesus disappeared. And I had a great peace in my heart. Tremendous peace. And I was rejoicing. And my wife said, a minute ago you were crying, now you are rejoicing. What's happened? I said, I met Jesus. While you were not meeting Jesus, I was meeting Jesus right here. <laughs> then, brothers and sisters, my faith began to explode. I could believe, despite of all of circumstances, and God performed miracle. The finance was flowing in through our church. More than 30% increase of our incomes, and I could cover the expense, and we could survive the shit trial, trial. You know, so when you have faith, do never feel that you not have any trouble. When you start to believe, then you will have challenge of Satan. You will have real spiritual warfare. Number four, once you have faith, then you must declare your faith publicly. You can't have a hidden faith. You should have an open faith. Jesus said, every time when he healed the sick, he said he sold the faith. You should show your faith to Jesus Christ through public declaration. You must speak the word. The word you speak will become the seed for your future. By you are speaking, you are planting the seed for the future. You plant the wrong seed, then you will harvest the wrong future. But when you plant the right kind of seed, then you will have abundant harvest. Many people, after having faith, then they deny their faith by a wrong profession of faith, by planting a wrong kind of seed, negative seed, then they harvest a destruction. You must see your future by your declaration. Every word you speak is that you are seeding the seed for your future. Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. How do you bind and loose? By your spoken word, by your declaration. So heaven is depending upon your profession of the mouth. And so it is very important to declare the right kind of the confession of your faith. And finally, number five. You must work very hard. Lazy person cannot accomplish anything. You may have clear-cut goal, you may have zeal to accomplish and pray very hard, and you may have real faith in your heart and won the war of the spiritual warfare, and where you may declare your faith, but if you don't work, you can't do anything. God needs your brain, your hand, and your feet. I have been in ministry for 45 years. 
But all these years, I have never had any personal vacation because I had no time to vacation. Mostly I slept in the church because we have early morning prayer meeting at 4.30. I conduct early morning prayer meeting. Then tremendous works are piling up before me every day. So I had such a burning zeal to accomplish the goal that God gave me. I had, had no vacation all through this life. I started my ministry when I was 23 years old. Now I'm 66 years old. But because I dedicated my life to the Lord, God never gave me up. I always had divine healing in my life and I had the strength to continue my ministry. Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today and forever. My dear brothers and sisters, you have great future and you are going to pursue God's goal in your life and you need the help of God. You must work together with God and God is going to do a great miracle for your life if you keep these four conditions fulfilled in your life. Number one, have clear-cut goal in your life. Number two, have a burning desire to fulfill the goal. Pray very much till you have assurance in your heart. Number three, have faith. Choose the faith. Have the overcoming faith. Win the war against Satan in the area of faith. Number four, declare your faith publicly every day because Bible says God calls those things which be not as if they were. So work together with God. Call your goal. Accomplished. And then God will work. Then number five, work very hard. Dedicate your whole life to work. Work very hard. Then God will give you the fruit of your labor and you will see the miraculous accomplishment and the satisfaction of your life. God bless you. Thank you very much.